two different things. One which is IP geolocation. Um, IP geolocation essentially is, is a database that contains a whole bunch of IP addresses and locations. Uh, and the other thing we'll talk about is what your browser exposes. Exposes. Oh, I'm not sure why I didn't add the test there. It exposes when you connect to, uh, to when you browse to a web page. Uh, so. IP geolocation is basically just a name for talking about for some way of going from an IP address to a physical location. Um, there are companies and open source utilities uh, that provide uh, this type of information. Uh, the, the cool thing about IP geolocation is that you can download it generally from a provider. Uh, so you don't have to be online to actually perform the lookup. That allows you some offsite type uh, things a lot easier. Uh, so you aren't really notifying uh, who you're trying to identify, but you're interested in them. Um, generally speaking, uh, these, the IP geolocation sources provide uh, other attributes as well as uh, location information. Uh, generally, that's because they the way that they figured out the location also means that they have other secondary attributes which they include with IP geolocation information. Um, you generally find more secondary attributes with the commercial providers than you do with the open source ones. Um, so what does it mean? Given an IP address, you can tell approximately where someone is, uh, which is generally speaking uh, pretty good. Um, I would say pretty good, that means reasonably accurate, it doesn't mean accurate. Um, uh, you can use it to send targeted internet ads, which a lot of companies uh, do. Uh, when you go to Google, they generally say, hey, you Arlington, Virginia user, are you interested in these companies? Which is specified, and it's, it's okay. Um, generally, uh, the other reason why they do it is because when you go to the BBC, they want to make sure you're in England and you're not in the US or another country where they don't have a license to show you that, if, that uh, program. Uh, which is too bad because I really do like spooks, but I think that's on that point. It's a cool BBC show. Um, because of some non-disclosure non type stuff, I'm going to talk about the open source uh, techniques for creating this information. Uh, and we'll, but we'll talk about the companies that provide this in a minute too. Uh, one way to do this is to ask the user, hostip.info basically says, where are you? And it then prompts you for you to enter your location. And that's a reasonably good way of getting uh, a for an IP address where someone actually is. You also say if you're a network provider, give us your location information as well. If people are willing to do that, that's not a bad way of uh, getting location information. Um, and for my home IP address, it's correctly identified that, that I am somewhere in the United States. Um, another way to do it is to query registries. So software77.net, which is a South African Christian internet provider. Uh, they basically, the, in addition to providing that web service, they uh, basically collect a bunch of who is information and they provide um, a basically a uh, mapping for who is locations to to an IP range. So if you have an IP address, you can get basically what who is would say what the country they're located in. And that's provided provided by the right you know, uh, reg registry information database that's provided by the who is registry information reg databases basically when you register for an IP address range you have to, to provide who is information and 
no one ever lies on that information, so it's obviously very reliable. Uh, that was tongue in cheek because a lot of people lie when they do that registry, but it's it's one way of getting the approximate location of an IP address. Yes. Um, host IP dot info. Um, and it returns, in this case, because we're coming from MITRE and someone provided that information, it, it says we're coming from Bedford. Uh, uh, okay. uh, for software77.net, okay. uh, you then go to somewhere here, IP to country. Um, uh, you then have. Do you have the right corner? Yes. Yeah, and up here you can enter your IP address and it will tell you um, basically the registrar. Yeah, we know. Right. Um, uh, for, for the numeric IP address range, it will tell you. Who the register are, who register is, and also the country code associated with that. Uh, that particular IP address is Worcester Polytech, uh, where I went to college. Uh, um, from here. Another way uh, to do it is to use a trace route regular expressions. Um, so, uh, this is discussed. Oh, why isn't it showing up? Okay. Uh, in the docu in the documents folder, I actually have a document that explains that uh, there there was a um, I don't recall off the top of my head, but there's a document in there which actually has uh, points uh, you to. particular academic paper that describes how to do it. This is also, uh, hostip.info has a forum area that discusses how they're doing trace out regular expressions to do it as well. Um, but basically, if you trace route an IP address from a remote host, uh, you go from MITRE to a quest.net. At quest.net, you have Branding out of DCA, which is Reagan Airport. You then go to EWR, which is in New Jersey. You then go to Quest in Boston. And then from Boston, it goes directly to the IP address. So that means that Worcester, Mass. is approximately close to Boston, which is correct. So that's another way of doing IP geolocation. Uh, and that's one of the techniques that providers use. Uh, to do that type of information. Any questions right now? I have one. Yes. So I have used Google Maps with the Wi-Fi walking around campus and it's updated my position pretty accurate. That's a different technique which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. Figured it could be. Um, they're cheating. Uh, <clears throat> um, so this is a list of the open sources that provide um, IP geolocation. Uh, MaxMind is a commercial company in Boston, or it used to be in Boston, they should be <coughs> close to Boston at this point. I think they actually moved out of the proper city. Um, uh, and they offer open source versions of IP geolocation as well as paid versions of IP geolocation. Um, they're there's a couple of minor differences, but basically the paid versions gives you a lot more additional attributes for a picture of a particular IP address range. Uh, they also provide history going back to 2003-ish or so, if you ask them, for the files that they produced over time. Uh, so if you care about where an IP address was at a certain date range, that's one way of providing that information. Um, Hostip.info 
was the first one we discussed in 70, software 77.net was the second one. Uh, the software 77.net also provides the birth date for the IP address. So you sort of know the first time that I, that IP address was actually registered to a location, so that might be interesting as well. Um, um, so the differences between the open source uh, sources and the commercial sources is that basically the open sources just have the location information or maybe one or two other attributes. On the plus side, you are, you are using known algorithms, uh, so you know how they got that information as compared to some of the commercial sources where they basically aren't sharing that, that information with you. They just give you the location and the other attributes, which uh, may or may not be useful. Um, the other thing is that um, commercial sources, which can be very expensive, uh, they, are, they claim higher accuracy. The issue is, is that it's hard to verify that accuracy without, um, without ground truth. And ground truth is unfortunately very hard to actually do uh, for the space. So that's a known issue, unfortunately. Um, the plus side with, with the open sources is that they're free. So if you need to do this occasionally, or if you need uh, need to do that sort of a secondary uh, technique to your overall mission, which is what I do on my site, it's uh, it's good to have the open sources. If you need to do something that is where you really care about the accuracy, you would probably want to go with the more commercial sources, given all the caveats that we're, I'm going to present to you in the next slide. Um, now, here is a huge caveats with IP geolocation chart. You can only get to the most visible IP address. Time frame. Time frame is a huge issue as well. Um, generally data is delayed at least one month plus time to generate the, the database. Um, so there's always going to be some lag time inherent with any IP geolocation solution for, uh, for location information. Um, there is a 1% to 2% change per month as well. So that's given the large number of IP addresses on the internet, they are uh, changing slowly over time as well. Um, domain name resolution is limited. Basically, uh, they try to look at for an IP address, what's the domain name associated with that? And that would generally be an AOL.com, MITRE.org. Um, and, but they will only get you to the AOL.com or the Meyer.org, not the www.meyer.org. Uh, netted IP addresses might also be an issue. Um, basically, uh, if a user is using a broadband connection, they'll have uh, they, they they could have they'll be using a their own IP address range behind that router. Um, so. You could have someone SSH'd into uh, that network, and then you'd be coming out of that location instead of where you, where you actually are. Uh, so it's that's basically the ways that you can cheat IP geolocation. Um, I'll be talking about more in a little bit as well. But so far, so good with the caveats. Um, so the next part is IP version 6 is slowly being integrated. It's more prevalent in Japan and other Asian countries as it is in the US right now. Uh, but that's also a known issue for IP geolocation. Basically, the service providers are providing betas of IP version 6 uh, geolocation. So if you come across an IP version 6 IP address, it's generally being routed through an IP version 4 firewall right now. If you do actually have IP version 6 IP addresses in your logs, that, then you have to basically go to a whole separate file that will probably be out of date for that. That's 
but it's generally speaking, it's only in those aging countries that you'll see IP version 6 IP address being used right now. And unfortunately, we do not have a piece of wood I can knock on right now. Uh, but that's sort of where IP version 6 is with IP geolocation right now. It's sort of like we, it's a known issue and they're trying to look at it. Um, so when you use IPG location, you'll get this type of information back. Uh, MaxMind gives me the location, Arlington, Virginia, yay. I'm using Verizon. Uh, in the past, it's located me to Alexandria, Virginia, or to other locations such as, I think the farthest, the farthest that got me away at one point was after rest. That was generally because what happened was there was a major storm, like Snowmageddon, or uh, the Drenko that went by and all of Verizon's infrastructure was knocked down and they assigned me a new IP address and took a while for the IP geolocation databases to catch up to the correct locations. They're generally accurate for the country. They're less accurate for the city level, but it's, it's one of those things where as a second, secondary indicator of where someone is, it's, it's reasonably good. Um, so this is a caveat of this is, uh, if, you, if, if you're looking at latitude and longitude information, you have to be sort of careful with it because even though they'll provide the latitude and longitude to a very specified degree, you have to be careful with actually uh, doing anything with that information because this is a IP address which is some which a lot of people are wondering why is this particular uh, farm in the center of the US um, have so much activity associated with it. Hmm. Well it's because it's in the center of the US and they weren't able to derive better location information. So they just said hey it's somewhere in the United States we're not sure where. So that's the reason why this like, location is so specific. It just happens to be the center of the country. And you'll see that in other, particularly in other countries as well, where we will just give the location information, the lat long information in the center of the country. Probably one, you, if you, you just have to be careful with interpreting these results sometimes. 